The whispering walls, the sprawling, decrepit mansion had stood abandoned for decades, its grandeur now reduced to a crumbling facade. The very air around it seemed to carry the weight of time and the secrets buried within its decaying walls. It was rumored to be alive with the voices of the past, and Emily, a curious historian, couldn't resist the pull of its mysteries. Mark, a skeptical journalist, decided to accompany her, dismissing the tales of whispered secrets as mere superstitions. The moment Emily and Mark crossed the threshold into the mansion, an eerie sensation washed over them. The atmosphere inside was heavy, and the air seemed to vibrate with unseen energy. The grand hallway was filled with faded portraits of a once prosperous family, their eyes following the visitors as if they were still alive. The duo ventured deeper into the mansion their footsteps echoing through the dimly lit corridors. As they explored, Emily couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, and Mark began to feel a growing unease. Yet, the mansion's secrets beckoned them forward. They soon discovered hidden rooms concealed behind tapestries and bookshelves, rooms that time had forgotten. In these forgotten chambers, they uncovered old diaries and letters, shedding light on the lives of the mansion's former residents. But it was in the grand drawing room that things took a chilling turn. As Emily and Mark stood in silence, the walls of the room seemed to come alive. Whispers, soft and haunting, began to fill the air. The voices were faint at first, like distant echoes of the past, but they grew in intensity as the minutes ticked by. Emily and Mark exchanged uneasy glances, unable to explain the phenomenon. Emily's curiosity turned into fascination, while Mark's skepticism slowly crumbled. They leaned in closer to listen to the whispered secrets that the walls held. The voices seemed to belong to a family, their words conveying love, betrayal, and tragedy. Emily pieced together the story as the whispers continued. It was a tale of a family torn apart by jealousy and greed, of siblings who had betrayed each other, and of a dark secret that had led to the mansion's downfall. As the voices grew more desperate, Emily and Mark realized that they were not just hearing echoes of the past. The mansion itself was reliving its history, as if the walls themselves were the storytellers. The climax of their chilling encounter came when the voices reached a crescendo, revealing the darkest secret of all. A murder, committed within these very walls, had stained the mansion's history with blood. The victim's anguished cries echoed through the room, and the walls seemed to weep. In a rush of terror, Emily and Mark fled the haunted room, leaving behind the voices of the past. The mansion's eerie secrets had been unveiled, and they had witnessed the tragic events that had unfolded within its walls. As they stepped out into the moonlit night, Emily and Mark couldn't help but wonder if the mansion had allowed them to glimpse its tortured history or if it had entrapped them within its ghostly grip. The boundary between reality and the supernatural had blurred, and the weight of history hung heavy on their shoulders. The whispering walls had revealed its secrets, and the echoes of the past would haunt their memories forever, a reminder that some mysteries were best left undisturbed, lest they consume those who dared to uncover them. The Vanishing Visitor The Haunted Mansion Notorious for its labyrinthine corridors and mysterious disappearances, loomed before Sarah and Tom. Sarah, a daring adventurer with a heart fueled by curiosity, had decided to test the myths surrounding the mansion. Tom, her concerned brother, had reluctantly agreed to accompany her, determined to keep her safe. As they crossed the threshold into the mansion, the air grew heavy with a sense of impending doom. The once grand entrance hall was shrouded in darkness, and flickering candlelight cast eerie, dancing shadows on the walls. Sarah led the way, her adventurous spirit undeterred by the unsettling atmosphere. Tom followed closely, his apprehension growing with every step. The mansion's reputation for swallowing those who dared to enter hung like a dark cloud over their heads. The hallways stretched out endlessly before them, and Sarah's sense of direction seemed to waver. The very walls themselves appeared to shift, closing in on them as if determined to keep them within its grasp. Tom's unease deepened, and he couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. He called out to Sarah, urging her to reconsider their venture, but she remained resolute. As they ventured deeper into the mansion, strange illusions began to play tricks on their senses. They would turn a corner only to find themselves back where they started, as if the very hallways were mocking their attempts to escape. Sarah's determination began to wane, but she refused to admit defeat. They pressed on, their footsteps echoing through the shifting corridors. Tom knew they were in danger, and he could no longer ignore the sinister presence that seemed to permeate the mansion. 
Then, it happened. Sarah vanished. One moment she was there, her silhouette fading into the dim light. And the next, she was gone, as if she had never existed at all. Tom's heart raced, panic surging through him as he called out her name, but there was no response. Frantic, he retraced their steps, searching for any sign of his sister. But the mansion seemed to conspire against him, its hallways shifting and twisting, leading him further into its dark heart. As Tom ventured deeper, he began to see ghostly apparitions, figures from the mansion's tragic past. They appeared as if from thin air, guiding him with spectral gestures, their faces twisted in eternal agony. Tom followed their lead, hoping they would lead him to Sarah. The mansion's illusions grew more sinister. Tom would glimpse his sister around a corner, only for her to vanish when he reached out to touch her. It was as if the mansion itself reveled in his despair, toying with his sanity. Hours turned into days, and Tom's search became a nightmarish ordeal. He had no food, no water, and no respite from the relentless shifting of the hallways. The ghostly apparitions continued to guide him their silent presence a haunting reminder of the mansion's dark history. Finally, in the darkest depths of the mansion, Tom reached a chamber unlike any other. The walls were adorned with portraits of those who had disappeared within its walls, their faces frozen in terror. In the center of the room stood a massive, ornate mirror, its surface reflecting Tom's haunted expression. As he stared into the mirror, he saw Sarah's face, pale and gaunt, trapped within its depths. She reached out to him, her fingers grazing the glass, but her voice was lost in a silent scream. With a surge of desperation, Tom lunged at the mirror, shattering it into a thousand pieces. The room seemed to convulse with rage, and the mansion itself seemed to scream in agony. But when the dust settled, Sarah was gone. Tom was left alone in the haunted mansion, his sister lost to the unexplainable forces that lurked within its shifting corridors. He had ventured too far, delved too deep into the mansion's dark heart, and now he was trapped, destined to join the ranks of those who had vanished before him. As he wandered the endless hallways, haunted by the memories of his sister's disappearance, Tom couldn't help but wonder if their venture had been an act of bravery or sheer folly. The mansion held its secrets tight, and those who dared to enter were never seen again. The vanishing visitor had become another chilling chapter in the mansion's dark history, a reminder that some mysteries were better left unsolved, and that the line between bravery and folly was a thin one, easily crossed in the pursuit of the unexplainable. The Haunting Melody The mansion stood as a relic of opulence and decay, its grand but eerie ballroom holding a secret that had haunted its halls for centuries. Clara, a gifted pianist drawn to the mysteries of the past, had come to explore the mansion's enigmatic history. By her side was Daniel, a music historian with a deep appreciation for the melodies of time. The ballroom was a place of faded grandeur, its chandeliers now dimmed, and its walls adorned with portraits of people long forgotten. At the center of the room stood a self-playing piano, a magnificent instrument covered in dust and cobwebs. Clara approached the piano her fingers trembling with anticipation. She couldn't resist the allure of the grand instrument, and as she placed her hands on the keys, a haunting melody filled the air. It was a tune of sorrow and longing, a melody that seemed to emanate from nowhere. Daniel, too, was captivated by the music. He recognized it as an age-old composition, one that had been lost to time. As the notes floated through the air, he began to research the piano's history, hoping to uncover the origins of this haunting melody. Days turned into nights, and Clara continued to play the piano, her fingers dancing across the keys as if guided by an unseen force. The melody had taken hold of her, wrapping itself around her heart like a melancholic embrace. It was as if the music had become a part of her soul. Daniel's research led him to a discovery that sent shivers down his spine. The piano had once belonged to a family that had lived in the mansion centuries ago. They were known for their love of music and the haunting melody had been composed by the family's youngest daughter, Isabella. Isabella had been a gifted pianist, much like Clara, and she had poured her heart and soul into her compositions. But her life had been one of tragedy and sorrow. She had been betrothed to a man she did not love, and her heart had longed for another. As Daniel shared the story of Isabella's life with Clara, the pianist felt a deep connection to the young woman who had lived centuries before. It was as if Isabella's spirit had reached out through the melody, touching Clara's heart and soul. Clara continued to play the haunting melody, each note a reflection of Isabella's longing and despair. But as the days passed, the music began to affect her in ways she couldn't explain. 
She felt as if Isabella's emotions were merging with her own, and the line between past and present began to blur. For Daniel, the melody revealed a different truth. As he delved deeper into Isabella's story, he uncovered a secret that had been buried for centuries. Isabella had secretly composed the haunting melody as a message to her true love, a forbidden love that had torn her heart apart. As Clara and Daniel unraveled the mysteries of the mansion in Isabella's life, the melody grew more powerful. It seemed to take on a life of its own, filling the ballroom with a haunting presence that could not be denied. And then, one fateful night, Clara played the final, heart-wrenching notes of Isabella's melody. As the music reached its crescendo, a ghostly figure appeared in the ballroom, a spectral vision of Isabella herself. She reached out to Clara, her eyes filled with longing and sadness. Clara and Isabella's spirits merged in that moment, and Clara could feel the weight of Isabella's unfulfilled desires and lost love. It was as if their souls had become one, and Clara knew that she had to play the melody to its conclusion to free Isabella from her centuries-old torment. With tears in her eyes, Clara played the final, bittersweet notes of the haunting melody. As the music faded into silence, Isabella's spirit began to dissipate, her eyes filled with gratitude and release. Clara felt a profound sense of closure and connection, as if she had given Isabella the peace she had longed for. The ballroom fell silent, and the mansion seemed to exhale a sigh of relief. Clara and Daniel had uncovered the haunting melody's sorrowful origin and had allowed Isabella's spirit to finally find rest. As they left the mansion, Clara knew that the power of music to hold memories and emotions was a force beyond comprehension. The haunting melody had touched their souls, revealing the depths of their own emotions and the unresolved pasts that lingered in the shadows. The haunting melody had become a chapter in their own history, a reminder of the enduring power of music to connect the past with the present and the living with the departed. The Shadow in the Mirror The mansion, shrouded in an eerie silence, held its secrets close, and Alice couldn't resist the allure of its mystery. She was a young woman with an insatiable curiosity for the supernatural, drawn to the unexplainable and the hidden. Robert, her companion, was a rational scientist, skeptical of the supernatural and grounded in the realm of logic and reason. The room they entered was unlike any other in the mansion. Antique, distorted mirrors adorned the walls, their glass surfaces warped and uneven. The dim light filtered through dust-covered windows, casting eerie reflections that danced on the walls like ghostly apparitions. As Alice gazed into one of the mirrors, she saw something that sent a shiver down her spine. A shadowy figure moved within the distorted reflection, its form shifting and changing like a specter in the night. It seemed to beckon to her from within the glass, its presence unsettling and otherworldly. Robert, ever the skeptic, dismissed Alice's claims, attributing the figure to a trick of the light or an overactive imagination. But Alice knew what she had seen was real, and the mansion's reputation for unexplainable phenomena only fueled her determination to uncover the truth. Days turned into nights as Alice continued to explore the room filled with the mysterious mirrors. Each reflection seemed to hold a different reality, a distorted version of the mansion's interior. In some mirrors, she saw glimpses of the past, while others showed her scenes of a future she could not comprehend. Robert, although initially skeptical, couldn't ignore the mounting evidence that something inexplicable was happening within the mansion. He reluctantly accepted the existence of the shadowy figure and joined Alice in her quest to understand the supernatural forces at play. Together, they delved deeper into the room, studying the mirrors with a mixture of fear and fascination. The shadows that moved within the glass grew more distinct, taking on an eerie, humanoid shape. It was as if they were peering into a parallel world, a spectral realm that mirrored their own. One fateful night, as Alice and Robert stood before the mirrors, the shadowy figure extended a hand from within the glass. It reached out, its fingers stretching toward Alice's reflection. And in that moment, the boundary between the real and the supernatural crumbled. Alice and Robert found themselves drawn into the mirror, their bodies passing through the distorted surface as if it were a veil between two worlds. They tumbled into a surreal realm, a mirror world that mirrored their own but twisted and distorted like a dream gone awry. In this mirror world, reality was a fluid concept, and the laws of physics no longer applied. The mansion's rooms were both familiar and alien. Their proportions skewed and their reflections warped. Shadows danced along the walls, whispering secrets that only Alice and Robert could understand. 
As they journeyed through the mirror world, they encountered distorted reflections of themselves, versions that seemed to embody their deepest fears and desires. The mirror world forced them to confront their inner demons, their reflections taunting and tormenting them with painful truths. The shadowy figure that had beckoned to Alice now revealed itself as a guardian of the mirror world, a spectral being that existed in both realms. It explained that the mansion was a bridge between the real and the supernatural, a place where the boundaries between the two worlds were thin and malleable. Alice and Robert's journey through the mirror world was a harrowing one, filled with surreal landscapes and disturbing revelation. They came to understand that the mirror world was a reflection of their own inner selves, a place where their fears and desires were laid bare. As they finally emerged from the mirror, back into the mansion's room filled with antique, distorted mirrors, Alice and Robert were forever changed. They had glimpsed the duality of existence, the unseen realities that lurked beneath the surface of their everyday lives. The shadow in the mirror had shown them the power of the supernatural to challenge their understanding of reality and the depths of their own souls. The mansion held its secrets, and Alice and Robert had crossed into a world where the line between the real and the supernatural was forever blurred. The Forgotten Room The mansion loomed in the moonlight, a foreboding structure with secrets buried deep within its walls. Henry, an urban explorer with a penchant for unraveling mysteries, had heard rumors of a locked room within the mansion, a room that didn't appear in any blueprints or records. It was said to hold a dark and gruesome past. Julia, a local legend enthusiast, joined Henry in his quest to uncover the truth. The two ventured into the mansion, armed with flashlights and a sense of trepidation. The oppressive atmosphere weighed on them as they moved through the dimly lit corridors, their footsteps echoing like whispers in the dark. They searched room after room, finding remnants of a bygone era, a forgotten doll, a dusty phonograph, and antique furniture shrouded in white sheets. But the elusive locked room remained hidden, a mystery that seemed to taunt them from the shadows. Hours turned into a relentless exploration, and just when they were ready to give up, Julia stumbled upon a concealed door hidden behind a dusty bookshelf. It creaked open with a ghostly groan, revealing a narrow, dark passage that led to the forgotten room. The room itself was unlike any they had ever seen. It was devoid of windows, its walls lined with cracked and peeling wallpaper that seemed to weep dark stains. In the center of the room sat a decaying dining table, set with tarnished silverware and rotting food. The air was thick with the acrid stench of decay. As they stepped further into the room, Henry and Julia couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. Shadows danced on the walls, and objects within the room appeared to age and decay unnaturally fast, as if time itself were distorted within those walls. Julia shuddered, her voice trembling as she spoke. There's something malevolent here, Henry. Something that's been waiting for us. Henry nodded, his flashlight casting long, eerie shadows. We need to uncover the room's history, Julia. Only then can we understand the malevolence that lingers here. They began to investigate, searching for clues amidst the decaying remnants of the room. Faded photographs on the wall depicted a family that had once lived in the mansion, happy faces frozen in time. Yet the smiles seemed forced, hiding a dark secret. As they dug deeper, they uncovered a journal hidden beneath the rotting floorboards. It belonged to the mansion's previous owner, a man named Samuel. The journal revealed a horrifying tale of obsession and cruelty. Samuel had locked his family in the forgotten room, subjecting them to unspeakable horrors. Henry's voice quivered as he read aloud from the journal. He believed that the room was a gateway to a malevolent realm, and he thought that by sacrificing his family, he could gain its favor. Julia's heart raced as she felt the presence in the room grow stronger, as if it were reacting to the revelation of its past. We need to leave, Henry. This place is cursed. But before they could retreat, a deafening scream pierced the air. They turned to see the ghostly figures of Samuel and his family materialize before them, their faces twisted in anguish and torment. The malevolent presence in the room had taken on a sinister form. Henry and Julia backed away, their hearts pounding in their chests. The figures drew closer, their spectral hands reaching out as if to drag the intruders into their nightmarish world. Desperation overtook them, and they fled from the room, slamming the door shut behind them. They stumbled through the mansion's dark corridors, their breaths ragged and their minds reeling from the horrors they had witnessed. As they burst out into the moonlit night, they knew they had uncovered a past too dark to be forgotten. The forgotten room had revealed its gruesome history 
and the malevolent presence that lurked within its walls had been awakened. Henry and Julia had escaped with their lives, but they could never escape the inescapable truth, the dangers of forgotten history and the inescapability of past sins. The Cursed Portrait The mansion's gallery stretched out before them, a dimly lit chamber filled with portraits of unknown people, their eyes following the visitors with an unsettling intensity. Among these enigmatic canvases hung one that was said to be cursed, a portrait that trapped the souls of those who dared to gaze upon it. Laura, an art student with a fascination for the macabre, and Ethan, a photographer seeking his next big story, had heard the legends surrounding the cursed portrait. They decided to explore the myth, driven by curiosity and the allure of the supernatural. As they approached the cursed portrait, they couldn't help but feel a strange sense of foreboding. The subject's eyes were empty voids, devoid of the spark of life. The canvas seemed to radiate an aura of malevolence, as if it were waiting to ensnare their very souls. Laura began her investigation, researching the history of the mansion and the origins of the cursed portrait. She discovered that the painting had been created by an unknown artist, its true purpose shrouded in mystery. The mansion's former residents had gone to great lengths to keep the portrait hidden, but rumors of its curse had persisted throughout the years. Ethan, on the other hand, focused his lens on the cursed portrait, capturing its haunting image in a series of photographs. With each click of the camera, the portrait seemed to change subtly, as if it were responding to their presence. As they delved deeper into their investigation, Laura and Ethan began to experience supernatural phenomena. Unexplained whispers echoed through the gallery, and the temperature dropped to an icy chill whenever they approached the cursed portrait. Shadows danced in the corners of their vision and they often felt as though they were being watched. One evening, as they studied the portrait, Laura's hand brushed against the canvas, and a shock of icy dread coursed through her. She gasped and stepped back, her heart pounding. Ethan rushed to her side, concern etched across his face. Did you feel that? Laura whispered, her voice quivering. Ethan nodded, his eyes never leaving the cursed portrait. This place is getting to us, Laura. We need to be careful. But they couldn't tear themselves away from the portrait. It seemed to beckon them, drawing them closer despite their growing fear. As they stared into the empty voids that were the subject's eyes, they felt a strange sensation, the feeling of being watched, judged, and condemned. Days turned into nights as they continued their investigation, unable to escape the mansion's grip. Laura's research led her to a hidden chamber in the mansion, filled with journals and diaries of those who had encountered the cursed portrait before them. Each entry spoke of the overwhelming sense of entrapment of a relentless presence that refused to release its victims. Ethan's photographs of the portrait revealed an eerie progression. The subject's expression seemed to shift with each shot, from sadness to anger to madness. It was as if the very essence of the portrait was alive, responding to their presence with malevolence. One fateful night, as Laura and Ethan stood before the cursed portrait, they felt an overwhelming urge to touch the canvas once more. Their fingers brushed against the cold surface, and in that moment, they were transported into the portrait itself, a nightmarish realm where the lines between art and reality blurred. Within the cursed portrait, they found themselves trapped, their souls ensnared by the malevolent force that had plagued the mansion for centuries. They were condemned to wander the twisted, surreal landscape of the painting, their bodies forever imprisoned in the canvas. The cursed portrait had lived up to its dark reputation, trapping Laura and Ethan in a nightmarish existence where the interplay between art and reality had become a never-ending nightmare. Their souls were forever bound to the haunted canvas, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked within the mansion's gallery. The Secret Garden The mansion stood imposing and grand, surrounded by a once majestic garden that had long fallen into disrepair. Rumors swirled about the garden, whispers of an otherworldly presence, and the peculiar belief that it was somehow alive. Lily, a botanist with a deep love for all things green, and David, a landscaper seeking his next challenge, were drawn to the garden's mysteries. As they ventured into the garden, they couldn't help but be struck by its eerie beauty. The once pristine pathways were now overgrown with tangled vines and thorny brambles. The flora seemed to twist and contort in unnatural ways, as if reaching out to them, beckoning them deeper into its embrace. Lily, with her keen knowledge of botany, marveled at the unusual plant life that thrived here. Some of the flowers appeared to bloom in response to her presence, their petals unfurling as if in greeting. Others seemed to recoil, 
their leaves folding inwards as if in fear. It was as if the plants were attuned to human emotions, reacting to their presence. David, the seasoned landscaper, couldn't deny the peculiar aura that hung over the garden. He had heard tales of spirits bound to the place, guardians of the garden who watched over it for centuries. As they explored further, they began to feel a presence, an unseen force that seemed to guide them through the garden's tangled paths. Lily's research uncovered the garden's history, a tale of love and tragedy. The mansion's former owners, a couple deeply devoted to each other and the garden, had perished in a tragic accident. It was said that their spirits now lingered, forever bound to the place they had cherished in life. One moonlit night, as they stood amidst the garden's eerie beauty, Lily and David felt a strange sensation, a gentle, caressing breeze that seemed to whisper through the leaves. It was as if the spirits were trying to communicate with them. Lily, her voice trembling, said, Do you feel that, David? It's as if the garden is trying to tell us something. David nodded, his gaze fixed on the moonlit foliage. I believe it is. We need to understand its message. As they continued to explore, the presence grew stronger, and they began to hear faint whispers, like the rustling of leaves. The spirits seemed to communicate through the very essence of the garden itself. They shared their love for the place, their sorrow at its decline, and their desire for it to be restored to its former glory. Lily and David soon realized that the garden was not merely alive in a botanical sense but possessed a sentience all its own. It had become a guardian of the spirit's memories and a protector of their love. The plants, the trees, and even the earth itself responded to the spirit's emotions and desires. Determined to honor the spirit's wishes, Lily and David dedicated themselves to restoring the garden to its former splendor. They worked tirelessly, taming the wild growth, nurturing the plants, and bringing back the garden's natural beauty. With each passing day, the spirit's whispers grew stronger and clearer, guiding them in their efforts. It was as if the garden was rejuvenating itself, responding to their care and dedication. The once twisted flora began to straighten and thrive, and the garden bloomed with a riot of color. One final moonlit night, as Lily and David stood in the heart of the revitalized garden, they felt the presence of the spirits all around them. The whispers of the past had become a chorus of gratitude and joy. Lily turned to David, her eyes filled with wonder. We did it, David. We've given the garden back to them. David smiled, a sense of fulfillment washing over him. And in doing so, we've connected with something beyond the natural world, something truly extraordinary. The garden had transformed, not just physically but spiritually. It had become a living testament to the connection between nature and the supernatural, a place where the spirits of the past found solace and protection. The secret garden was no longer a place shrouded in mystery and dread but a sanctuary of beauty and guardianship. Lily and David had unlocked its secrets and, in doing so, had discovered a profound bond between humanity and the world of the unseen. The Attic Whispers The mansion had stood for generations, its grandeur fading with time, but its attic remained untouched by the relentless march of years. Jack, a writer desperately seeking inspiration for his next novel, and Nora, a medium with the gift of communicating with the beyond, found themselves drawn to the attic's mysteries. The ascent to the attic was steep, and the air grew heavy with anticipation as they climbed the narrow staircase. Cobwebs clung to the walls, and dust danced in the dim light that filtered through a small, cracked window. They stepped into a forgotten world, a realm filled with old trunks, moth-eaten clothes, and dusty relics of a bygone era. The attic was a treasure trove of memories, each object an echo of its owner's past. As Jack and Nora began to explore, they could feel the weight of history pressing down upon them, a chorus of voices from the past yearning to be heard. Nora, her eyes a conduit to the world beyond, closed her eyes and whispered, There are spirits here, Jack. They want to tell their stories. Jack, a skeptic by nature, was hesitant but intrigued. He watched as Nora moved from object to object, her fingers grazing the forgotten relics. It was as if the spirits of the mansion had chosen these items as vessels for their tales. The attic seemed to respond to Nora's presence, and the air grew charged with a palpable energy. Jack shivered, feeling as though he were on the cusp of something extraordinary. Nora's voice quivered as she spoke, her words carrying the weight of ages. There's a spirit here, a woman from the early 1,900 seconds. She had a love that was forbidden, a passion that was concealed from the world. Jack, intrigued by the spectral narrative, asked, Can you communicate with her, Nora? 
Can you uncover her story? Nora nodded, her eyes distant as she channeled the spirit's memories. Her name was Evelyn, and she was in love with a man who belonged to a rival family. Their love was a secret, a hidden affair that defied the boundaries of society. As Nora spoke, Jack felt a presence, an invisible thread that connected him to Evelyn's story. He could almost hear her voice, whispering in his mind, sharing her emotions and secrets. The attic itself seemed to come alive, its walls echoing with the emotions of the spirits. Objects vibrated with spectral energy, and long-forgotten photographs began to flicker with images of the past. Jack and Nora were witnesses to a tale of love and tragedy, a story that had been locked away in the attic's recesses. Days turned into nights as they delved deeper into the spirit stories. They uncovered tales of lost loves, unsolved mysteries, and unfulfilled dreams. The attic, once a place of forgotten memories, had transformed into a living tapestry of the past. The more they learned, the more the attic responded. Shadows danced in the corners of the room, and objects levitated, suspended in the air as if guided by invisible hands. The spirits' voices grew louder, their stories more vivid and haunting. One fateful night, as they stood surrounded by the spectral energy of the attic, Jack felt a presence unlike any other. It was a spirit yearning to communicate, to share its final message. Nora, her eyes filled with a mixture of awe and trepidation, whispered, There's one more spirit, Jack. It's someone who wants to say goodbye, to find closure. The attic trembled with the spirit's presence, and a gust of wind swept through the room. Objects spun in a whirlwind, creating a maelstrom of memories. And then, in the center of the chaos, a photograph floated before them. It was a picture of a young man, his eyes filled with longing. He gazed at Jack and Nora, his expression a mixture of sorrow and hope. Nora's voice quivered as she spoke. He wants us to know his name, to remember him. His name is Samuel. Jack felt a surge of empathy for Samuel, a man trapped between two worlds, yearning for a connection to the living. He spoke aloud, addressing the spirit directly, Samuel, we hear you. We won't forget you. As their words hung in the air, the attic's tumultuous energy began to dissipate, and the spirit's presence grew fainter. The room seemed to exhale, as if the attic itself had shared its stories and now rested in peace. The attic whispers had revealed a hidden world of memories and emotions, a place where the persistence of the human spirit transcended the boundaries of time. Jack and Nora had unlocked the secrets of the mansion's attic leaving behind a legacy of voices from the past that would linger in their hearts forever. The Cellar's Secret In the heart of the Forsaken Mansion, beneath the weight of its long-forgotten memories, lay the cellar. It was a place of darkness and dread, whispered about in hushed tones by the locals. For years, it had been avoided like a cursed crypt, and those who had dared to venture inside had never returned the same. Mike, an amateur ghost hunter with a penchant for the unknown, and Rachel, a historian drawn to the mansion's enigmatic past, found themselves standing before the cellar's forbidding door. Their fascination with the mansion's haunted history had led them here, to the threshold of a place that seemed to defy reason. Rachel, her voice trembling with anticipation, said, There are stories, Mike, tales of malevolent forces lurking in the cellar. They say it's a gateway to another world, a place where darkness reigns. Mike, undeterred by the ominous legends, flashed a confident grin. That's exactly why we're here, Rachel, to uncover the truth, to face whatever lurks in the shadows. With a collective breath, they pushed open the cellar door, and it creaked in reluctant submission, as if protesting their intrusion. A wave of cold air greeted them, laced with a faint, otherworldly scent. The stairs descended into darkness, the feeble light from their flashlights offering little comfort, Descending into the abyss, they were immediately enveloped by a sense of claustrophobia. The walls of the cellar seemed to press in on them, and the air grew thick with an unsettling stillness. Strange symbols were etched into the stone floor, their meaning lost to time, and eerie, unidentifiable sounds echoed through the oppressive silence. The deeper they ventured, the more the atmosphere shifted. Whispers, faint and distant, danced at the edges of their perception. Mike's flashlight flickered, casting erratic shadows on the walls. Rachel's voice trembled as she said, Do you feel that, Mike? It's as if the very air is alive with malevolence. Mike nodded, his heart pounding in his chest. We're getting close. I can sense it. They reached a chamber at the cellar's heart. And there, amidst the oppressive darkness, they found it, a portal. It was a swirling vortex of shadows, an aberration in the fabric of reality itself. 
The unearthly sounds that had haunted them grew louder. A cacophony of voices from an alien realm. Rachel's face paled as she muttered, It's true, Mike. The cellar is a gateway to another world. Before they could react, the portal pulsed with an eerie light, and from its depths emerged grotesque, otherworldly creatures. They were like phantoms, spectral forms that defied description, their eyes filled with malevolence. The cellar came alive with a nightmarish frenzy as the creatures closed in, their unnatural movements defying the laws of physics. Mike and Rachel fought back with desperation their flashlights casting erratic beams that seemed to repel the spectral entities. In the midst of the chaotic struggle, Mike glimpsed a grotesque figure emerging from the portal, a being that seemed to be both predator and prey in this eerie dimension. It reached out toward him with elongated, shadowy limbs. With every ounce of his strength, Mike hurled a beam of light directly at the creature's form, and it screeched in agony, dissipating into the darkness. The other creatures followed suit their ethereal forms crumbling into nothingness. But the portal remained, its swirling vortex threatening to consume everything in its path. Rachel, her voice trembling with fear, cried out, We have to close it, Mike. We can't let it devour our world. With their combined efforts, Mike and Rachel began to chant, their voices resonating with power. The cellar shook with the force of their incantation, and the portal quivered in response. As they chanted, the unearthly sounds grew louder, invading their minds and threatening to shatter their sanity. But they persevered, their determination unwavering. With one final surge of energy, they unleashed their will upon the portal, sealing it shut with an explosion of blinding light. The cellar fell into an eerie silence. The malevolent forces banished once more. Mike and Rachel, panting and exhausted, exchanged a triumphant look. They had faced the unknown depths of reality and emerged victorious. As they ascended from the dreaded cellar, the mansion seemed to exhale a sigh of relief. The malevolence that had clung to its depths for so long was now vanquished. Mike and Rachel had uncovered the cellar's secret and faced the dark forces that lurked within. But they knew that some secrets were best left undisturbed. That the depths of the unknown held mysteries that could test the boundaries of human understanding. As they stepped out into the moonlit night, they couldn't help but wonder what other secrets lay hidden in the shadows, waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to seek them out. The Staircase to Nowhere In the heart of the enigmatic mansion, where shadows clung to every corner and secrets whispered through the walls, there stood a staircase. But this was no ordinary staircase. It was a twisted marvel of architectural defiance that defied the laws of physics. It was a staircase to nowhere. Anne, an architect known for her unwavering devotion to logic and design, found herself irresistibly drawn to the mansion's peculiar feature. She had heard the stories, the tales of people ascending the staircase and vanishing into thin air. It was said to be a portal to another realm, a gateway to the unknown. Beside her stood Ben, a seasoned paranormal investigator with a penchant for the supernatural. He had faced entities from the beyond. But the staircase presented a challenge that transcended anything he had encountered before. Anne's voice trembled as she said, It's, it's impossible. No staircase should lead to nothing, Ben. Ben nodded, his eyes fixated on the peculiar structure. That's precisely why we're here, Anne. To unravel the mysteries that defy explanation. With determined resolve, they ascended the staircase. Each step they took was a step into uncertainty. Their hearts pounding as they defied the laws of reality. The mansion's walls seemed to shift and bend around them, as if the very fabric of space was unraveled. As they reached the top of the staircase, they were greeted by a bewildering sight, a vast, starlit void that stretched infinitely in all directions. The mansion below them was a mere speck in the boundless expanse. The laws of physics seemed to have no dominion here. Anne's voice wavered as she whispered, This, this can't be real. Ben, ever the investigator, held out his hand to test the void. His hand disappeared into the nothingness, and he withdrew it with a sense of awe and trepidation. It's real, Anne. We've stumbled upon something beyond our comprehension. As they gazed into the abyss, Anne and Ben experienced a profound disorientation. The very concept of space and time seemed to lose its meaning, and they questioned the nature of reality itself. Suddenly, they were not alone. Figures appeared on the edge of the void, indistinct and ethereal. They beckoned to Anne and Ben, their motions graceful and inviting. Ben's voice trembled as he said, Those, those are the vanished souls, Anne, the ones who climbed this staircase and never returned. Anne nodded, her fear giving way to a strange curiosity. 
We must follow them, then. Perhaps they hold the key to understanding this place. With cautious steps, they followed the spectral figures into the starlit void. As they moved deeper into the boundless expanse, they felt a profound sense of detachment from the world they had known. Reality seemed to warp and twist around them, and time itself became a fluid concept. The spectral figures led them to a place that defied all logic, a room suspended in the void, its walls adorned with countless doors. Each door seemed to lead to a different moment in time, a different reality. Anne and Ben approached one of the doors, and as they opened it, they were transported to a different era. They stood in the midst of a grand ballroom filled with people from a bygone era, their laughter and music filling the air. Ben whispered, This is incredible, Anne. It's as if we can witness any moment in history. They moved from one door to another, each leading to a different time and place. They witnessed great triumphs and profound tragedies, moments of joy and sorrow that spanned the ages. But with every door they opened, they felt the fabric of reality grow more fragile, as if they were unraveling the very tapestry of existence. Time anomalies surrounded them, distorting their perception and challenging their understanding of causality. Anne's voice quivered as she said, We need to go back, Ben. This place is tearing at the seams of reality. Reluctantly, they retraced their steps, following the spectral figures back to the boundless void. As they stepped back onto the mansion's impossible staircase, they felt reality reassert itself, the starlit void receding into the distance. Their journey had come to an end, and they found themselves back in the mansion, their minds reeling from the experience. The staircase to nowhere had tested the boundaries of their understanding revealing the fragility of reality itself. Anne and Ben exchanged a solemn look, knowing that they had ventured into the unknown and glimpsed the limitless possibilities of existence. The mansion held secrets that defied explanation, and they had only scratched the surface of its mysteries. As they descended from the staircase, they couldn't help but wonder about the allure of the inexplicable, the irresistible pull of the unknown. The staircase to nowhere had challenged their perception of reality and they knew that some mysteries were meant to remain unsolved, forever shrouded in the enigma of the mansion's twisting corridors. 